All right, hey, how's it going? Uh, so yesterday we had a little talk on Twitch in which Theo and I had a bit of a debate about explicit versus implicit returns. And so it kind of got me thinking throughout the night. And, you know, I, I do like to go into things thinking I can be wrong, right? There is definitely a chance I can be wrong. And in this case, I don't think I'm wrong. You should always explicitly type your return functions. And so let me go over a couple reasons why I think it is better to do that. So right here, you take this function. So this is effectively the example given. I'm trying to do my best to, you know, you know, represent uh, the thoughts here. So let's just say you are a new person coming into this code base. You're, you're new and you have to make an update to this function. Tell me about the function. Well, you will notice right away that down here, it's called get permissions. Okay, so this thing's probably getting some sort of permission set here, right? Uh, and you realize that you get a role in here and you get an admin, a user, or a guest. Okay, so it's some sort of different set of permissions depending on the user, but that's the only information you get. What does it return? Well, you know, a good function probably should be shorter. You could imagine that these things should probably be refactored out, blah, 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 blah. But nonetheless, as a new person coming into this, you can't even tell what's returned. Instead, you have to inspect code to see, hey, what is being returned in these functions? Am I doing the right thing? What updates am I making? If I update something right here and realize that I have, I mean, how do I know that I've made a mistake? Early return? What do I put right here? Return what? Right, like how do I even know what to do? Because I don't even have a guide. I don't even have the original attentions of the author saying this is what we expect. Instead, I can make changes and I will discover throughout the code base those who are relying on it in a certain way. Or I can know what the original intent is and go, okay, well, I can't return a null in this situation. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should go ask somebody, hey, is null a valid thing? Should we even consider it? Or you just have the Wild West in which you don't have any types defined. Second, there's a whole other thing that goes along with this. Let's just say that you had a type user uh, that had some sort of like, right, user permissions that had something in here. Uh, shoot, I don't even know. What, 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 what do we put in here? Uh, foo number, doesn't really matter. And then also we had a, you know, an admin P, right? And let's just say this thing had a bar number. And then we also had a, you know, a guest permission, right? And so you're like, well, but then you're going to get into this situation where it's, you know, user P, guest P, admin P, and that looks really confusing. I, I agree with you. That does look confusing. To me, this is a really great example of why having a return type makes you realize, hey, you know, I should probably finish out this typing job here. This does not look like a good experience. If someone takes these permissions and then has to pass them out on the outside, it can be rather inconvenient. Not only that, but they have to do runtime guard checking by checking for fields as opposed to, say, some sort of type discriminator. And what I mean by that is if you got this, like, user admin guest back, you'd have to do something along the lines of is Baz in the permission to know that, oh, this thing is a guest permission set. Right, So this is very complicated. It doesn't lead to very good code, and you may or may not know this or see this as clearly if you don't have things typed right away. So instead, you can do some nice little permissions, right, equals user P, guest P, whatever, and then maybe you want to do something even better here, which would be some sort of uh, role, which can be this, and then data, which can be that, and you can actually have a nice object wrapper that gives you a very clear and obvious thing what you're attempting to do and allows for things that maybe are a, a little uh you know you know a little uh a little nicer you know and so that's kind of like my initial thought is that it gives clearer intention you can really see what's going on second you can catch yourself doing something strange right you can catch yourself making the wrong decision earlier on uh i had a couple other things um, oh yeah, there was another one, which was one of the arguments effectively provided is that down here, you are returning, say, some sort of from JSON. Now, JSON, whenever you encode it, what ends up happening is that this comes out as an any, right? And so you have to cast it. So the argument is, is better that cast it right here, say, user, you know, user data, right? Than it is to cast it up on top because now you, you don't even know. Well, again, argument comes down to the exact same thing. Which one would you rather 
you know, which one would you prefer? Finding all the places in which you return to find which of the polymorphic data that you're returning, or would you rather have it defined up here? And then when you go down here and you cast it down here, which I do recommend casting it down here, it makes sense. You're like, okay, this is the part that does this part of the program. I understand this. And more so by me seeing this up here and not just returning these three things, you'll also notice that down here I can go, okay, well, I need to have a role. Oh, crap, I put user right here and I'm in the admin block. It becomes a clearer set of items because I refactored earlier on. I made more concrete types. I am looking at what I am doing. And then, of course, lastly, uh, uh, let's see, this argument I, f I find to be really silly right? Oh, but when you're refactoring your code, having return types, uh, it just takes longer. Uh, first off, get good at typing, honestly. Uh, LSP helps you. Copilot helps you type faster. Thirdly, you're going to be doing this for 40 to 60 hours a week. This idea that you don't, you shouldn't have to learn to type fast is just crazy talk, okay? It is just crazy talk. Just get good with your tools. It will seem like nothing. Second, get good with your editing. Use some sort of at least like Vim in VS Code so that way you can come here and just do things fast. You're not trying to constantly do this. Third, learn your tools. I don't want it to be called perm anymore. Awesome. Let's call it permissions. Well, guess what? It changes it everywhere. You can do this anywhere you want, right? Like it's, it's just a silly argument. If you wanted to change these things, you can change them however you want swiftly. If you have to rewrite a function or refactor a function, the lowest amount of time should be spent on typing out the return type versus the actual code within the function. If you are changing a function, you should ask yourself, why am I changing it? How am I affecting the data shape? And how does this affect the world? By having this right here, the intentions are clear. It is upfront. It makes people new to the code base be able to grab things and grok things way quicker. I do not understand the argument against just implicit return everything. Yes, you're going to save a couple keystrokes, but I really do think in the end, having any sizable code start growing, you're going to just make weird type decisions. And of course, you'll catch them on the other side and you'll just type guard everything out, but it just leads to more if statements, more type guard checking, perhaps weirder looking data sets. I don't know. Just thought, anyways, think I'm wrong, make a comment, like the video. You know, this is the second channel, so I just say a bunch of stupid stuff, you know. Uh, it is what it is. You know, ultimately, in the end, uh, software developers all have an opinion about everything, and we all feel very strongly about the opinions, and I feel strongly about my opinions. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth, okay? And you should just know that. Like, as someone getting new, maybe maybe you're newer in the industry, maybe you uh, have been in here for a little bit and you find it bothersome, that's the nice part is you don't have to play the game. You don't have to have a strong opinion. Ultimately, when I'm in the code base, I just try to do what other people do in the code base because I find that playing by other people's rules in their, you know, in their playground is better than trying to assert how I think things should be done everywhere I go. Now, there are times where, hey, maybe I think you should write a unit test for this part. Hey, maybe this is better tested in a, you know, with an integration test. Like there's times where doing it your way is beneficial to the ecosystem as a whole but I try never to assert everything I think on other people's areas. Hey, thanks for watching.